Hey, hey guys, how you doing? Okay, um, today we're back on the racetrack again, looking at AI versus human and stuff like that. But I thought you would like to see this other little trick that I accidentally stumbled upon. If you use the glitching mechanism to keep your car from flipping and then you turn the, the, the sensor skyward, as I have in this one, what it does is it'll let you almost flip. So yeah, it lets you go into the sort of two-wheeled stunt, uh, stunt car driver type thing. But also it lets you do a lot more than that, as you can see, you can dance about, um, it works in reverse. And you know when it's either you or the glitch that's taking care of things by watching the green light. So you can actually become a little bit expert uh, to the point where you can drive it without even relying on the glitch on its wheels. So a lot of fun there. Okay, before we hit the racetrack though, I just wanted to go back to my old loop the loop machine. Um, if you remember that from a few weeks ago. Um, I'd abandoned it for a while because I was having technical issues, but the new sensor controls that came out from Axelot this week um, cured some of them. See, I can use this switch on off thing to control when the gate goes up and down on the exit gate. And so that proved to be quite useful. Plus it's got now got a 20 block range on the sensors, so that helps a lot as well. As you can see, it just blatantly didn't fire again there, but it was just to give you an idea. Um, so yeah, I managed to get it working. And uh, the thing that's missing now is um, the ability to hold that car at short notice on such a tight line as you're going up, because it gets thrown about all over the place. But as you'll see in a second, I did manage it a couple of times, and then it's given me the idea, maybe, to um, bring some AI into it, and then just get the sensors themselves driving the car. So that could be in a future episode, we'll see how it goes. Because I really want to get the whole Hot Wheels feel for this thing going, so that it comes out of the loop and it stays on the track and it does some jumps and ramps and goodness knows what else. So we'll see where it goes, but here you can see, it gets round, I waited the front of it there. It sort of stumbles across the finishing line. And here is our new AI opponent for the racetrack. Uh, it's completely different, it's about a quarter of the size of the old one and about six times the power. This thing is really amazing. This is it on slow speed, just so I can show you it quickly. Uh, this is it on fast speed and it's out front and i got to try and catch it, i got no chance, it just takes off. Um, so it is a really, really quick machine. And what I did was I took all the ideas from this, from the non-flippable cart, and I, I put them into the AI cart and lowered its sensor of gravity. And you can see it still struggles with the, <laughs> with, um, the odd technical glitch here because it's awful jumpy and twitchy. It just goes all over the place. But I did manage to get it so that I could get it to go round the track about three or four times without crashing once. But this time I went out in front thinking I'll get ahead of it and try and come up behind, but I crashed and I quickly thought, I wonder if it can get past me, and it very nearly did. You actually see that it was just trying to steer out of it, and, uh, and it goes up. But as you can see, it's got a lot of energy, a lot of speed. Uh, here it is on its own doing, I mean, this is, I took this as an extract from one where, like I said, it did three or four circuits without crashing once. Um, so it's pretty amazing little machine. Definitely going in the right direction with this AI thing. Uh, I'm going to keep going with it because I've got quite a few plans. But one of them is to have multiple AI machines on the track, and we'll do that in a wee minute. We'll put two AIs against each other just right at the end, the slow one and the fast one, to see if we can get any joy there. But me personally, I didn't have any joy racing against it at all because uh, that car that I was driving is still too big for the circuit. I have started building a bigger circuit, um, so in the next week or two, I'll probably bring that one out. It's much bigger, yeah, and it's designed for faster AI vehicles so they're not labouring so much on the corners and nearly turning over as this one does. But you can see the abilities that it's got, it's just amazing. So uh, again, that was because of the 20 plus now sensor range. I was able to get that out of it and a few other little tricks. And I'll show you some of the things that that has leading up to right now. Now, one of the things I want to build is an attack bot or a guard robot or whatever you want to call it, yeah? And um, it just takes the sensor thing and rather than it avoiding obstacles, it goes towards them. Now, with a single one like this, once you're out of the beam, it just stops. So there had to be a way to get that beam to go hunting for you. So you've got to put a, a, a feedback loop on a disc back into the controller so that it searches in the direction that you came from and keeps going backwards trying to find you again. And this is what happens. I've got one going left and one going right. And you see it's hunting backwards from where I came and it stays with me. And it, all the time it's trying to turn those wheels towards me to keep me in field of view. So this is a roaring success. Um, it's just a small test vehicle, this one. But I'm going to build this up into something else, probably by the next episode. Um, it's got huge potential. You may not think so, looking at it crawling there, but I think it has. We'll see where this one goes. But yeah, it was, it was very effective, really effective. 
rather, I say, rather than having the sensor just on the one one block wide beam, it's now on like 10, 15, 20 blocks wide by the time it gets to you because it's searching for you. Works a charm. There you go. So one goes right, one goes left, and then one turns the nose right in hard, that one there, to capture you. The one on the very end, the proboscis one, isn't doing anything. It wasn't linked up to anything. It was just testing to see uh, how it go. Okay. So this was a bit of fun. This is AI versus AI. Now straight away, the new machine is way, way too fast um, for the old machine and it just catches it up straight away and runs it off the track. I should probably have done it the other way about, put the fast one out front and the slow one and get it to lap it. But then I thought, well, what we'll do is we'll get, I'll slow the fast one down till it's almost just about the same speed and I'll see if there's any way it can figure out how to get around the slightly slower vehicle in front of it. You know, slightly slower, very much slightly. So it's got to bide its time here and it just keeps following it around, following it around. But eventually it does. As the, the older machine hugs into one of the corners, it jumps out and tries to overtake it on the inside then runs it off the track. Fantastic AI beating AI. It's amazing. And it was, it was definitely deliberate. It's the way that the machines are set up to do that. So I followed it around for one more time. Um, and round it comes, I'm thinking it's going to try and avoid it, go all the way around it again, but no, instead of this time it actually attacks me and then and then it attacks the machine that's lying there again and tries to flip it as you'll see, so very aggressive little machine, yeah. It's great, I love these sensors and controllers together, are fantastic, there's so much fun to be had. There's so many discoveries to me, look at this, look, wow, it's just right into it and again. Uh, yeah, you can definitely make um, automatic battle bots in this game, I'm sure you can. We'll see where that goes.